Yeah, some wonderful action again from uh, the Victoria Carnival and of course Bling It On taking out the Hunter Cup. Hi to everyone, welcome into your box seat, brought to you in association uh, with Woodland Stud where they stand sweet Lou and of course throughout the month of February, PGG rights and massive months uh, for them with the sales of course. Uh, our friends from Brick and Bloodstock uh, getting behind it as well as Harness Racing New Zealand. Michael. What happened? Don't blame me on for Saturday this. night. Just because the week before you were there with your Labrys <laughs> love thing, and we won seven out of seven. Um, yeah, the other day, boys, roller coaster, and it was, uh, it was it was kind of good because it's nice that different people win the races, fellas. Um, as we say, big hi to everybody around the country. But there are excuses for some. Our new mate Vincent, no excuses for others. Our old mate, Smolder, and in between lots of hard luck stories and unusual stories. It was an interesting night at the office. All right, looking forward to going through those. Um, what happened to you over the weekend? What happened? Well, I wasn't jet sitting like our friend Michael, giving Hugh Gregory uh, and the viewers as well. I was uh, planted on a beach in Pawanui over the weekend, and a few people thought, well, what's that big fish doing on the beach? But enjoyed it. Uh, sat back, got the catalogue out under the sun, Greg, and uh, went through a couple of days at Christchurch in Auckland, of course. Big sales coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll highlight that later in the show. All right, it's your show, so let's bling it on. Bling it on, just in behind them from Yaya's hotspot. Guaranteed, hug the wind runs on. Lenny the Shark and Smolder. Bling it on, back to the inside. Lenny the Shark, Smolder. Here's Bling it on. Bling it on gets through on the garage spring lane. And it's Bling it on's cup. Bling it on shoots away. Bling it on first. Second, Yaya's hot spot, and third, Lenny the Shark, awakening Smolder. Well, he and you deserve that. Thanks, Nick. We, um, he's been going super, and he sort of he's really stepped it up this preparation. He's had a great summer so far, like his performances, and for him to come out with tonight was a big thrill. After the early burn, did you think you had run past Smolder quite that easily? Um, even though I was out there working towards the front, Nick, we weren't. We weren't running overly hard, and we sort of got there at our own tempo. And um, actually, the, the quickest part of the race was when Smolder come up outside me. I sort of quickened up, and he just, you know, put the pressure on, and we had to take the sit on him, and it worked out good. You go home now to your home track and mile racing. I suppose sitting just off the speed, the miracle mile becomes very tempting. We, well, we hope so. <laughs> um, he's just stepped it up this prep. I think the Dominion was great for him in that series. He's a lot tougher now in his races. Um, you know, and, uh, what do you think? If, if they go in 147, 148 now, he could follow that speed and still have the sprint at the end of it. The times seem to be getting ever faster at Manangle. Well, you mentioned following a good speed. What's he capable of pacing? I think he can get a pace 49 and change in front, but you know, following, I think he, he, he get down in the 47s. He's just one of the great blokes, isn't he, Luke McCarthy? Um, I want to talk about this horse because at two and three he was a star. He won a lot of money, won a couple of derbies. Uh, we know he was placed in the Miracle Mile last year. I think he was fourth, was he not? Um, he's, he's a smart horse, but this is his biggest win, clearly. Yeah, he went for that period where lots of four-year-olds go through and they struggle in the open class and the transition. and. I sort of thought he was just a youngster. I don't think he'd make it in open grey, but he's been stronger this season. Unlucky in the Inter Dominion, very good in the Victoria Cup. Um, that was a definitive performance because now he's a big player on the big stage, and every time you come to a decent race, now you're going to say, you know, where does he sit? I thought he was very good because he burned early, Craig, mm. and while he trailed Smolder and had the gun run after that, he won very, very easily. Mm. If you'd never seen this horse before, and he's not very big when you look at him, you would look at it and go, wow. This is a really good horse. So, uh, a New South Wales trained Quinella, he has to be a factor wherever he heads now. Yeah, he was very, very good. I thought it was a great drive by uh, Luke McCarthy. I think New South Wales haven't won a race for 32 years. That was the last time uh, a New South Wales horse had won this race. Luke McCarthy's first as well. Um, the, the writing was on the board. Everyone thought this would occur. He'd find the front, he'd hand a smolder. What we didn't think is he'd probably get the passing lane as easy as he did and win this race. But he's won 42 races, fellas, so a million and a half dollars. I think the trip to Perth made this horse. I've always thought he's been a little bit soft, but had tough racing over there. Came back to uh, to, uh, to the Victorian Cup and went good there. And then on, obviously onto the Hunter Cup. So I think um, it's a race that'll make this horse and he'll go forward from it. Look, let's talk about it. Away from um, Smolder and, and the runners in behind, Michael, this carnival's been ruined. 
Look, the Victoria Cup's a good race, always has been mobile. The, this race just becomes formulaic now. You jump, lead, trail. Mm. Mate, it's no different to the week before for mine, and they're racing for half a million. I think they've completely stuffed this up by changing it from a stand, and I'll go on record as saying that. Yeah, it, it's a different thing in Australia. Like, I, I think this would be a better race as a standing start, but since they've canned standing starts in Victoria, and they're absolutely adamant they're bad for turnover now, there's lots of arguments around that, and you can, you can argue that all day. Um, I do think had this race been a standing start, Lenny the Shark wouldn't have started, mm. and Bling It On might have started, might not have started. Mm. So, But one of the problems is, is that trainers want to go to one race and then not the next race. And what you need is what we had 20 years ago when Master Musician, Blossom Lady and a whole bunch of the good horses go to the same races. We seem to be struggling to manufacture a proper grand circuit and half it's because the trainers want to pick and, and choose which races they go to. Um, by doing that, I think there's an, an idea in the offing and we see Bling It On here coming forward and Smolder follows him. So it, it's Craig said, it's pretty formulaic. There's an idea that maybe Harness Racing Victoria needs to say, if you start in the Victoria Cup, you have first preference to start in the Hunter Cup. So you get the best horses starting in both. Because at the moment, too many trainers are saying, I don't want to start in both. Uh, I'm not sure how you fix it. I'm sure there's plenty of people who think that the New Zealand Cup and the Free for All are too close together. Um, OK, a, so, so the Bonanza... Lazarus had to go in that. Let's be fair, if he lined up in that race, it was half a million. Yep. The Bonanza was 100,000, yep. and yes, it gets him into the $200,000 chariots, but he would have won that if he lined up in the Hunter Cup. Part of the reason's the ownership. Yeah. Part of the reason's the ownership. He's owned by some of the same people who own Smolder. Mm. So it's a hard thing to make that case. It, it, it confuses me two things about the open class scene. Why these horses don't race each other that often? And I understand the Perth thing. It's a long way away. But also confuses me why we have this giant abyss which we're about to be swallowed up by for open class. Once we get through the Easter Cup, there's going to be no open class racing again to October. Mm. So that's a bigger problem for me. You can't make the trainers line up. What we do have a problem is we're not going to have any free for all the open class racing of any great depth for seven or eight months of the year. No. Now that's like, if we sit in, in cricket circles or rugby circles, we're just not going to play the best players for eight months of the year the sport would suffer, and, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, well, you keep talking about free-for-all races uh, in this country, and hopefully that might change in the future. What about those beaten in behind Bling It On? Huge run for second, must be very happy. Yeah, very, um, kind of satisfying. He's been balloted out of that many races, that little horse, and um, we would have loved to be in the Vic Cup last week, and I think tonight he had to quick back up from Sunday at Goulburn, so he had to do a lot of travelling, and he, he held his head high. Press on to the preludes of the Miracle Mile? Yeah, definitely. We'll see how he pulls up. Um, but he's definitely getting better as he gets older. So, um, look, we're looking to the future. And yeah, maybe this year they might rank us a little bit better for the Indian Dominion. Huge run, no luck. Yeah, his run was great. Um, you know, second, second run in, in sort of eight weeks. And um, worst possible draw. Didn't have a lot go right in the run. But, you know, he was so brave and he's only going to get better. Yeah, he went a great race, didn't he, Lenny the Shark? And you just sort of wonder where he sits now because um, the confidence level should be high off the back of that run. Well, he was 147.5 last year in the Miracle Mile, so clearly he's a big danger there. Um, the obvious story out of the race is Smolder. We all thought he was going to get the lead, and he did get the lead. He just clearly underperformed. There's no excuses here. You can't say he was attacked by Lenny the Shark because Lenny finished a mile Wasn't in Wasn't it a of him. very similar run to his New Zealand Cup run? That's what it that's appeared. That's exactly yep. what I thought, Craig. Mm. One of those cases, they can't win all the time. They can't perform to their optimum all the time. Mm. And clearly, he picked a bad night to have a bad night. But he's had such a great summer. You've got to be willing to forgive him. It's not a lot of fun, though, when you take the $2.10. Well, for the punter's sake, no. But I think what you've got to remember, these horses aren't machines. He had his first run on September 23rd. Now, he isn't like Lazarus, who had a six-week break over Christmas. He's raced every month from September through to February mm. and gone super races right throughout the season. He had an off night, Greg, but it was overdue. All right, it probably was, and of course he heads to Sydney as uh, well. But let's go to the featured trotting race of the carnival. Of course, uh, revamp, great southern star. Uh, we'll get Dan Malecki to bring it home and then discuss uh, the finish after that.
the straight. Speeding Spur peels to the outside. Starts to knuckle down strongly the favourite. Then came Heavenly Sister. Glenfree Typhoon. Speeding Spur. Glenfree Typhoon. Glenfree Typhoon. Held on to beat Speeding Spur. That's got to be one of the more satisfying wins of your career. Yeah, I definitely Mick. Uh, as you know, this preparation horse hasn't been trotting that well and hasn't been performing that well. You had an operation in the last season and you know had the ball stain removed and we thought he'd be trotting really good. Looking forward to this preparation, but he's been nothing caused but a headache this time in. So uh, to get him on on the line perform like that is a great thrill and quite satisfying. It can't be a comfortable watch from the stand because he appears to be pulling so hard he simply couldn't keep going. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, Kate was aware that she had to get a slow quarter and you know she really sort of when he done that he's feeling really good on the bed he's a horse that probably um has raced over you know can over race at times but um he raced here monday but his last hundred he you know he was taking little steps and he's got history of tying up and i thought oh and at 2700 getting all this pressure with such a great horse like speed and spell on that back I, it was a long straight to watch i know that but you know it was good enough to get there it always takes faith to buy a going horse off a good trainer you had faith in this fella. Yeah, no, definitely. He always had terrific speed for a trotter, and uh, when he came on the market, we had an opportunity to buy him, you know, for pretty reasonable money. So, we'll, you know, we we're fortunate to get him into the stable, and you know, he's, you know, there's no doubt he's going to pay the owners, and he's still got a lot, you know, a lot of racing ahead of him. Were there times in the last six months when you gave up and you thought we're not going to get this horse to the Great Southern Star? Yeah, no, definitely. I, honestly, I raced him here Monday and he was in a subpar race. No disrespect to the horses he against, but I thought he can't win here Monday. We'll, you know, we'll go to the easy option, race him in between that little three-four race here. But he showed good class here Monday. He sort of put a good gap on him, and you know, it was good signs. And you know, that run sort of topped him off really nice for tonight. Yeah, that T5 or better race on Monday, remarkable. You could go from that to a $300,000 race. You, you go back to October, Michael, he had two runs, finished sixth in both of them, was disappointing. Um, from last year's second in the final, uh, it's amazing how things can go. What a roller coaster. Same Cornella as last yeah. year under totally different circumstances. Both horses have spent an enormous amount of time on the sidelines. Um, this horse had a, a gallstone or a kidney stone about this big, like the size of a saucer. It's remarkable, really, how big it was. And, um, I don't think he'd come back, and he, he, he's always been a weakish sort of horse. Craig, I thought this was the performance of the Australian training summer. Hell of a performance. Mm, absolutely. It was actually a bladder stone. Yeah, we got bladder stone. Whatever yeah. it was, it didn't look nice. Yeah. I wouldn't want it inside you. No. Um, but yeah, on him, um, obviously he's come back very, very well. Found the front. Barry draw was a big assist to him, but he never got left alone in the race, Greg. They, they kept attacking and he just kept finding. Um, he's out of a family that... Uh, the McFarlane's own. Um, there's been a lot of good ones out of it. I think um, Cyclone Lucky 7, Cyclone New Bolt, Cyclone Dream, the list continues and I think uh, they've got a muscle hill filly at the moment, a two year old as well. So it's it's a local family the Kiwis know very well. An enormous advantage Michael as we take a look at the start. Uh, of course Barrier 1, a horse with good speed. Gee, he raced untractably though. I, I remember yeah. looking at it down the back the last time thinking well he's pulling, pulling his block off. Uh, there's no chance he'll be there at the finish but um, he just kept on going and, and as Andy quite rightly said then got a soft enough quarter that he was able to continue to, to, to keep going. It was massive. As I said, wonderful training performance. I, I thought he had no chance down the back. Bandage came loose, he kept on trucking. Um, Josh Dickey did everything he could to get speeding spur home. You could just tell his lack of race hardness was a factor in the last 200 metres. Um, Josh copped two weeks for knocking somebody over with a lap to go and it was three hundred thousand dollars. He'd probably he'd probably get over that pretty quickly. But um, I, I know speeding spurs better than these horses, but he just wasn't fit enough on the day. But take nothing away from the winner. Fantastic, Sunny Ruby, excellent. Probably uh, um, David Butcher thought that quite a moment would tow him into the race better than it did. Mm. Quite a moment underperformed again. Yep. Um, she's had a great summer, just wasn't her day. And Sunny Ruby was excellent. So. Um, Speeding Spur is going to come home this week. He'll probably go back there next month for a big race, the Grand Prix. Uh, wouldn't be surprised quite a moment stayed there, I would think. And Sunny Ruby, Sam Smolenski, has some choices to make about what he does next. Um, she's trotting there well. It'd be tempting to press on. Let's have a look at the drive uh, of uh, Josh Dickey and uh, how he got this horse into a, a winning position. Um, we'll put the big hand in here. And that's him uh, coming three wide. And uh, this horse is rolling along in front on the inside. And his uh, speeding spur. And ah, there's the Woodlands team. It's, it's funny because there was two other drivers that could have taken the trail here. And neither one of them wanted it. Great things happened could have taken the trail. As could on Thunder Road. No one wanted to go on that gap. So Maritime was drifting in the trail. And as you can see at this point, 
there's two. There's a gap there. Great things happen. Could take in the trail. He didn't want it. He wanted to sit parked out. So Josh gets in there, but at that point, uh, cops some interference to Maori time. He gets two weeks holiday and a thousand dollar fine, uh, which I'm sure he can afford after running second in the race. But very strange race. A lot of things happened into it, but uh, the winner was just far too good. Yeah, and uh, you're right. No, he wanted to get in behind him. I suppose they were looking at Kate Gath and the way she holds her hands, and, and the horse may well have not been pulling as hard as, as what it appeared. But they always seem to be pulling for Kate. She's only a little tiny thing, and she always seems to be leaning enormously back in the sulky. Um, doesn't seem to bother that horse. Um, I thought Speeding Spur was excellent. Um, I think also the myth of a lot of this free-for-all trotting racing in, in Australia has been exposed. A horse like On Thunder Road looks enormous when it races those poor horses, but once the better horses, the really good Group 1 horses came back, um, and the horses who couldn't have last year's Great Southern Star, it's enormously exposed. The one thing I felt, I was driving home after the races, I thought, what would Mon Bay have done to them? Mm. You know, it, it must be really hard for the connections of Mon Bay. That's life, though. That's that's the luck of the game. But well done to the Glenfrey Typhoon crew. They bought the horse as a going horse and put their faith in him. And Andy trained him exceptionally well for that. All right, five Group Ones on the night. Another of those was the Derby. Yeah. Not a great watch for the Kiwis, but here's the Breeders' Crown winner who's only having its second run back since winning that race late in August. And the puppet gets a moment. From Motu Meteor, it's our little general kicking away 50 out. Our little general does it all the way. Our little general won it. Beat Motu Meteor. Well, luck and barrier draws are a big help, Chris, but you still need a good horse to win a derby. Oh, that's for sure, Mick. You know, little general is probably not the ideal prep, second run into a derby, but um, Clayton was really happy with him from last week to this week, and we were going in confident, although it's going to be hard to beat Vincent, and we had the luck, and unfortunately he didn't. It's been a tough month for a couple of months for the stable, actually. Not a lot's gone right with their absolute best horses. Must be very satisfying for a stable you had so much to do with to get this win for them. Oh, for sure. And, and they love Little General. Like, obviously, they're, everyone thinks Storm inside's a little bit better, and he unfortunately went amiss. So, General had to step up to the plate for him, and uh, yeah, he did a great job tonight. He's not a big, robust, or scary horse, but is he one of those horses? A little bit like Bling It On, who's so good he'll just keep on fighting even when he gets through to those older age groups? Oh, for sure. He's, he's probably even better driven off the speed and, and just using for his speed because he's very, very fast for a quarter. So, uh, you know, he'll get bad, a bad draw somewhere and, and be able to drive him with a sit and he'll really sprint hard. Mm, he's only a little guy, isn't he? Remember seeing him last week for the first time, or the week before as it is now. Um, and uh, he's not big in stature, but he's got a motor. Yeah, and he's he's good at beating New Zealand horses. Breeders' Crown, um, the Derby, again, getting in front of them is absolutely crucial. Gate speed, key factor here. Look, whether he's going to go on to be a top horse, maybe there's a little bit of bling it on about that, but everybody who had a bet in the race probably wants to know what happened to Vincent we know now into the first bend Mark drove him inch perfectly got off and then boom um, Chris Geary there was a, a Constantina Chris Geary got on his tyre and flattened the tyre Mark had to pull him out of the race is he a better horse than our little general of course he is let's have a look we at know that, Michael that. here was the start and here's Mark so he's on the inside of the second line in the blue and he pushes away straight away so he's done the right thing and Zach sort of goes past him so he pushed so that's blue moon rising and the yellow colours outside him Mark's pushing into a gap gets off and then everybody sort of takes hold here a little bit they start to find their positions once they take hold Constantina effect things get tight and Chris Geary just goes straight to the back of him now flatten his tyre Mark looked down and the dollar 45 chance is effectively out of the derby after this Really good moment, R really interesting moment, which gives you a look into Mark Purden's personality. They're outside the steward's room, and I walk out, it's near the cafeteria at Melton, and I said to Mark, what did you make of that? Chris, Mark's there, he's young Chris Geary, young kid. He's just not the favourite out of the derby, and it's Mark Purden. He's got to be thinking, oh, I'm going to cop a surf here. Mark said, look, it's happened to me. It happened again to me at some stage. It's happened to Chris. It's one of those things. It's unfortunate. It's not his fault. You know, nothing we can do about it. So Chris Geary's sitting there going, whew. Now, there was no abuse. There was no, what about this silly kid? There was none of that stupidity. Mm. Mark Purden handled himself with class. Now, they don't give you your money back for that, unfortunately. But it was nice to see it happen because he could have ruined that young man's confidence. As it was, he said, look, it happens. It'll happen to me. It'll happen to all of us at some stage. What about the other Kiwi performances? Modern Meteor, outstanding. Geez, come a long way, this horse, from winning Craig at 
uh, Alexandra Park, Park and, and Cambridge, and, and, Cambridge yeah. and, and now he's run second in a derby, and went great. And he had to be very good. Um, he came three wide and had to sit out there and do it. I think the race was set up for horses that were on the speed because it was the first three in the straight that were, that were, that were the first three home. They were all looking for Vincent to come. Yeah. And when our little general got there and there was no moves in the race, he controlled it pretty well in front. But uh, he's come a long way, Modu, uh, Modu Meteor. He, he's a horse that probably, as you say, wouldn't rake in their top half a dozen. But over there, he's getting better and better. And you know, a nice run, a nice drive by Anthony Barr. Our Jack's legend. B. Jack's legend. Um, uh, B. Sorry, B. Barry Jack. and Zach Bosey, yeah. disappointing. Um, he had to come four wide down the back straight, but the horse he actually came around beat him home. So he just he underperformed. And mm. it was a very hot week there. Some of the New Zealand horses didn't perform or didn't have the luck. Um, Vincent would have won if Eddie sat parked, because clearly he's a better horse than Modern Meteor. There's no doubt about that. He'll now head to New South Wales um, to take on Ultimate Machete, who trialled today. So they'll both go to the derby there. I think they'll split them in the preludes. That'll be interesting. Interesting to see where he sits in that whole um, What about setup. the New Zealand derby? Where are these horses going to land there? Because now he's missed the Victoria well, derby. Vincent was purchased in Australia, so he's eligible for the APG. So I would suggest he's less likely to go to a New Zealand derby. I see he's into $5, by the way. Yeah, I, I think that's too short, whereas Ultimate Machete doesn't have that option. So I would suggest he's more likely. Now, I don't know exactly what the plans are, but he has options in Australia which um, Ultimate Machete doesn't, doesn't have. Doesn't have, yeah. OK. All right, let's move on to the Bonanza and the Group 1 winning run of Lazarus continued, although he certainly didn't get any favours. But he made the turn awkwardly into the straight. Rock of America in front. Now Lazarus comes at him quickly. Getting through late was three ways. Lazarus, he descends. He hits the lead, the champ. And Lazarus, he'll get home. Bralos pass. Flew for second. Three ways third. Fourth in Rock of America. And then roll 22 from uh, 26 now for him. Um, oh. I don't know this factually because I haven't spoken to Mark about it, but I just wonder whether he backed off him slightly given that he's got this, followed by the Chariots, followed by the Miracle Mile, and therefore he gave him, well, as an soft a run as you can. Week. Yeah. yeah, I spoke to him about that. He said, look, we were really doing it out wide. Like he said, they were humming 54 8 the last half, and he came wide, and Craig, he got a bit unbalanced mm. on the apex as of the As he bend. did in the derby yes, the last year, before. year. And it was actually fun. It was a very similar finish to the derby last year. I think it was a very confident drive and a, a softish confident drive. Um, he's in for a big week. He's got to head to the Chariots of Fire this week. He's got Barrier 4 there, but they are forecasting. It'll be 43 degrees in Sydney on Saturday. So Melbourne, you know, long float trip north, 10 hours. It's going to be an awfully hard week for him, Craig. And at some stage, like we saw with Smolder, mm. you can't just keep performing to your optimum. Mm. At some stage, maybe it was the Ballarat Cup, he's going to sting the punters because he's always so short. And it's hard to believe he can just keep winning with all the travelling and everything else that goes in there. I think you'll probably win this week. But when you saw that wobble on the home bend, you start thinking to yourself, if Hector JJ or Lenny was in front of him in a miracle mile and he did that, Craig, yeah, maybe. I'm vulnerable. a little bit different to you fellas. I think um, Mark's never asked him to back up three successive weeks. He's done that in three weeks. Now he's going to have to ask him to go four this week in the, in the Chariots of Fire. I think what Mark did there was sum that race up very nicely. People say, hey, you got a little bit unbalanced out wide on that track. But you remember, boys, he went 152.5 his last mile in the Victorian Cup. He's got a similar last mile on that race at the Bonanza. But the difference was one was on the marker pegs. In that race, he was three wide doing it. So Mark's balanced him around that last bench. Sure, he was a little bit rocky, but he's at high speed. Mm. I mean, he's going the same speed as he was in the Victoria Cup and yet he still run away from them. Last half was 54 seconds. I thought it was outstanding. Off the apex of the bend, that 100 metres, didn't, when he really asked well, him, he, man, the, the he most flew. exciting part of that race wasn't the bend, it was the 100 metres yep. outside the winning post because that was where he was dominant. That suggested to me that, hey, sure he's had three hard runs, but it hasn't knocked him yet. The truth of, uh, well, the, the, the big question, will, will the fourth week knock him? All right, we'll find out, uh, of course, on Saturday night. Should be a cracking contest. Three in it for the All-Stars, uh, as we know, our Waikiki Beach and uh, yeah, Chase the Dream. And Natalie will drive yep. our Waikiki and Beach, Luke, Luke McCarthy, yep. on Chase the Dream. Not so. a bad pitch, is it? Yeah, look, and I think it would have been six or one half dozen with the other. Our Waikiki Beach has got a better draw than Chase the Dream probably made that decision for them. All right, the Mayor, Rocker Band. Gee, this was a positive drive. Uh, Zach Butcher asked a lot of her early. He had to ask for plenty late. Let's get Dan Malecki to bring them home. 
Perez. Rocker Band, a Piccadilly Princess, the outside. Rocker Band just in front. A Piccadilly Princess pegging it back. Rocker Band hanging on. Rocker Band does it all the way. A brilliant win. Did that surprise you, Barry, the gate speed from the outside of the front line? No, not really. No, she's uh, she's always a quick mare, so uh, it was always going to be the decision that we were going to have a go early and, and get handy anyway. So but she crossed them like that. It was just a bit of a bonus, really. She's won a harness jewels back in New Zealand. I would suspect she'll go awfully close to a 150 mile around an angle. Oh, I'd say so, Mick, yeah, yeah, without a doubt, yeah. Next stop, the ladyship's the big aim. Would you consider racing her at Menangle the week before? Well, we'll just have to talk about it with Mark, Mark Jones and, uh, and Greg Brody, but um, at this stage, we'll just keep our options open. It'd be a good, nice idea to give her a start, perhaps, before the big one. She's 12 from 32 now, Michael, and uh, by my reckoning, up over 300,000 New Zealand. So there was probably a stage in her career where you might not have thought that was possible. I think she's just been beautifully placed, and now she's got a 52-1 mile rate round there, and, and she can only enhance that, you would think, in the next two weeks. Yeah, it's a story about positivity. Um, Zach's drive incredibly positive. He didn't settle for, I'll go back at the start, or I'll look to slot it. He just, blah, here he goes, blast blast off the outside of the gate. Winning of the race right here. and It shocked Mark Purden with Piccadilly Princess. He didn't expect it. He said after the race, I didn't see that coming. And uh, that put him in the dominant position in the race. So that was the winning of the race. It's also a story about positivity because she wasn't in our five best three-year-old fillies. She wasn't. She was dominated as a three-year-old filly. But she's come back at four, and Mark's just kept pressing with her. Mark Jones and Sam Otley drove her beautifully in the jewels. And Mark's also said, look, let's not get my ego in the way here. Let's send it to Barry Purden. She's better there. Barry can take her to Aussie. That's, that's positivity. That's being positive. In an industry which could do with a lot more positivity, here's the poster girl for what it gets you. Gets you 152s, gets you group ones. Um, she's heading to Sydney. It would be so easy to say, well, she can't beat Dream About Me. But then again, a month ago, she couldn't beat Piccadilly Princess in this race. Yeah. She's gone across, Barry's rolled the dice, he's taken his chance, and Craig, she will run a wicked mile around Menangle. Well, she got 60,000 Australian for winning that race, so she's well and truly paid for her way. I mean, she goes for a big race next week. What does her future lie, Michael? Because for me, I suggest she's probably better placed totally in Australia than she would be coming back to New Zealand. Look, I think by splitting where you've raced, you give yourself heaps more brood me appeal because now Australian buyers, when they go to the sales in two or three years, will but, see but you. But what is here for her now well, as a five-year-old man? Uh, Queen of Hearts in December, that's all. You that's know it. What? But, I mean, that's a long time between well, that's, drinks. That's right. I don't think they need to have any targets anymore. I think these good horses have to be Australasian horses. You, need to, you can say to yourself, I'm going to Perth, or I'm going here, or I'm going to Sydney. Or I'm, you need to race them wherever they can possibly go. I think that's, that's the way you need to think about them, but it's an expensive thing to do. Um, again, it raises the question about mares. Week in, week out, I'm going to keep hammering on about this. We should have a mares free-for-all or a mares handicap with com condensed handicaps programmed every week. And if the clubs program them and the trainers don't want to support them, that's fine. But most of our five-year-old mares are effectively worthless as racehorses. Mm. And unless somebody does it and says, we're going to hold these, so you turn up or don't turn up, because the time for inaction has stopped. We've got to have free-for-alls programmed every week at Addington and Alexandra Park. And that sometimes they can be standing starts, so not free-for-alls, open class races. And we've got to have mares races. But our trainers need to respect that and say, I'll race my horse more often, rather than molly coddling them, or I'm scared of Barry and Mark and all that rubbish. So the clubs and the trainers need to be in this together. But somebody's got to start it, mm. fellas, because not everybody's rocker band. And there's going to be all those horses behind them who need racing or we lose them to the And industry. another great example, just before we leave the Victorian car Carnival, uh, Huey Green. Great to see him back winning. Now he's based in Australia, never to come back. And no doctor needed in Menangle. Mm. They both should be racing at Alexandra Park and the $20,000 free-for-all, which is programmed every week. Yep. But until our two major clubs do this, but most importantly, until our trainers get off their ass and race these horses, this isn't going to work. Mm. No, you can't be more uh, uh, to the point than that. Uh, Michael, by the way, Huey Greeny will head to the Bohemia Crystal at the end of the month uh, at the Menangle uh, Carnival. Uh, have faith in me, may join him there, Greg. Mm. 
I'm not seeing her faith in me. No, he was beaten the other night. He was disappointed. Is racing By the good enough Cup to winner, be a as you mentioned Lyle. last week. Maxi <laughs> Man, he did it. Let's head to Sydney because uh, that's where we'll be going in the next couple of weeks. Uh, party on remained unbeaten, Michael. Yeah, not an overly quick time. It was a nice little prelude for her. She heads next Saturday, not this one, to the heats of the New South Wales Oaks. And to be honest, fellas, she's just better than these horses. Simple mm. as that. Um, of course, she's uh, now unbeaten still developing into a very, very good Phillies record. Yep, this was an outstanding one. Seven from seven now. Big filly, isn't she, uh, Greg? She's taken a while to come to that big frame. But yeah, she was good. I don't know a lot about the opposition, but I did think this win was uh, exceptional because Nettie got left parked and she really pressed a go button from the 400. And, and most importantly, Chase the Dream, who's, who's got barrier 10 in the chariots. Um, Dream About Me was in this race, had a slight virus last week, was pulled out of the race. Mark is not starting her this week, but they will go to the 18th at Menangle. But Chase the Dream very good, copped a poor draw this week, but it might turn out all right. Just before we leave Australia, the Melbourne sale, of course, was on Sunday, and the average there went from 28 to 34,000 or thereabout. Yeah. 200,000 dollars for our Waikiki Breach, uh, his half brother. Horses who had very good sale, Art Major had a really strong sale. We know the betters sell well, but Art Major and American Ideal had a good sale he had a on good the weekend. back of what Bligget on did too. Mm. So yeah, they were the two stars of the show and the sales circuit starting over there as we get closer to the ones. All right, here. we've got some pretty positive of news to come out uh, on the show very shortly. When we come back, you'll hear all about that. Just ahead on your box seat, we wrap all the feature racing from Aotearoa from the past week. Welcome back in to your box seat. Of course, February brought to you by Harness Race New Zealand uh, Brick and Farms. It's great to have them on board uh, with us as uh, we build towards uh, this uh, really important sale coming up. Uh, speaking of which, big announcement coming out from one of our big clubs uh, with a view towards the future. Well, Bruce, some good news coming out of the Auckland Trotting Club, particularly for those who are heading to the sales in a couple of weeks' time to buy a horse because come the 2018-19 season, that horse could be racing here at Alexandra Park for a lot more money. Yes, Michael, um, we've been in the fortunate position of uh, selling 246 apartments of our first stage of our development, so at this stage it's all so sold out. So we've sat down and looked at our finances and we'll be introducing in the 2018-19 season an extra $40,000 per night at our race meetings. Um, which is uh, one and a half million over the season in extra stakes in the 2018-19 season. Okay, so this is obviously aimed with that date structure about 18 months away at people who are going to the sales or breeding, for example, a horse this year, it'll be three by the time that comes around and they can go to Alexandra Park with basically an average stake increase of $4,000 per race. That's correct. If, if, if spread over all the races, that's an extra 4000 dollars per race which on a twelve thousand dollar maiden will lift the stake to approximately sixteen thousand. Now the MO threshold for a horse to become an MO to an M1 in Australia is fourteen thousand nine nine nine. A sixteen thousand dollar maiden stake sounds absolutely beautiful but are there concerns about it affecting our export market? Well one of the things we've looked at at the Auckland Trotting Club is we want horses to race at the park we haven't really looked at the export market and if we can encourage owners and trainers and drivers to race here with these stakes, we will believe the horses could stay in New Zealand a lot longer. You have this external revenue stream coming online with the apartments and potentially further development down the track. Was there any temptation to say, let's make the Auckland Cup half a million, let's make the Auckland Cup a million dollars, or is this money important that it goes to everybody? Michael, we've looked at it and it's important that the money goes to everyone, it goes across the board to encourage owners to have a better return to induce new owners into our system. Further on down the track when other developments are done we would probably look at increasing some of the feature races. So is this set in stone, is this agreement, is it, is it a done deal? They'll be racing here for potentially at least a $16,000 maiden starting August of next year or uh, maybe even a $20,000 free-for-all. Is, is this confirmed? This is confirmed looking at our figures. We've sold our product down now so we know what our, our revenue is. We've looked at our costs 
we're well on budget, so we're announcing to the industry this is what's going to happen. Let's talk about the developments. It, it sounded like a huge undertaking at the time. It's still yet to be built, of course, but selling them means the money is guaranteed to come in. What's been your personal take on what's unfolding here at the park? What's unfolding and to achieve what has happened so far has taken a lot of work by the management of the Auckland Trotting Club. The board have been very supportive and worked hard. It's been a massive undertaking, but at the end of the day, we believe the industry will be a lot stronger once this development is completed. If you do develop at a second level and then potentially a third, could this continue to rise? Is there a potential, Bruce, that in five years, or eight years, we might see $20,000 maidens at Alexandra Park? There is the potential for that. At our last AGM, the members approved the next stage of the development, which we're doing feasibilities on now, which we'll look at the cost structure and the profitability before we go any further. But if that all works, then stakes will keep increasing. Very positive news uh, heading towards the sales, of course. Couple of things, Michael. Um, the threshold for Australia. Let's just get that out of the road. That's the bottom one there. Stake, maiden stake goes to $16,000. You beauty, let's keep the horses here. Name me one bloodstock agent who's put a cent back into the game via sponsorship. Sometimes you get the odd one, or by racing horses, and we continue to have this threshold that we shouldn't go past that stake level. That's just rubbish. I, I was in a meeting about five years ago with two very, very smart people in the industry demanded the maiden stake stays at $7,000 because of the then threshold. We cannot yoke ourselves to Australia, which has an inferior industry with inferior percentage of turnover. Now, if people want to export horses, that's fine. The ATC's job is not to protect the export market. Their job is to make people want to stay here. Yes, this is a year and a bit away, but it's now so people can go to the sales and say, if I buy a horse at the sales, and it's not ultimate machete, it's just a horse, or if I buy a horse from the South Island and bring it to Auckland, I should be able to race for a minimum of something like $16,000. There'll be someone here who wants to criticise whatever, because the ATC has this bunch of moaners outside. The same moaners didn't want the buildings built. Mm. The, same moaners, the same moaners wanted to take that money away from the industry. Simple as this, Craig, $40,000 dollars mm. a meeting mm. is going to go into stakes at Alexandra Park. Mm. This is a gigantic deal. Yeah, and it's been spread over not just the higher grades, but the lower grades. If we're going to race for $16,000 for maidens, I mean, the average training bull in the North Island, Michael, you would know, and I know as well, because we've got horses with senior trainers, you're looking at $2,500 uh, $2 a month. I mean, it's significantly higher than the South Island. And this for various reasons. But you've got to be winning races. And if you've got $16,000 winning stake for maidens, the winning stake's going to be around $10,000. That's going to give you four months training fees. This is positive news. Here's something a little bit random. How far are we away from spinning the winning post down to the other end, developing the whole of Alexandra Park, and you're racing the right way around? <laughs> well, the way developments are going there at the moment, maybe they should reduce it to a 400 metre track and just build more buildings. <laughs> it's a very it is unreal, and, and, isn't it? And it's it easy is. to be really um, cocky about it. They had land, so they've got a big advantage. They have mm. land in the centre of Auckland. They're not geniuses, but what they did is they made a decision and they pressed on. Mm. Again, you get rewarded for positivity. In life, negativity gets you zilch. Yep, it does. Uh, great move there and great right before the sales as well. Um, speaking of the sales, we've got a couple of age group performers out of Saturday. And uh, the first of those, the time uh, honoured, Craig Sapling Stakes. Uh, down on numbers, we'll hear from Jeff Dunn off the back of it, but uh, he was very professional, like he had been at the trials you, leading into this. I mean, they've lost Tiger Tara, but they've got a nice little replacement here, haven't they, in, in Cole Porter. He's out of De Lovely, the second fold from this mare. And, yeah, very professional. He's not very big. He's very fine, but he's very speedy. I thought him and the Brooklyn Brawler good out of it. Cullen Byrne runs into third, but, yeah, he was a good winner. Has beaten home the Brooklyn Brawler, Cullen Byrne third, a nose in front of a way overnight. Jeff, there were a few that thought he was a little bit small come sale time, but you guys weren't in that camp, and I'm sure you're pretty pleased about that now. Oh, yeah, wrapped now, yeah. First time you've seen him, we loved him. He had the beautiful shape he was, a bit small, but um, better's lights, we never worry about that too much, and I've, I've never mind having a small horse. 
What about his preparation up until now? Because through his trials, he appears to have got better each time. Yeah, he's, he's, he's real strong, you know. He covers the ground real deceptive. Jer always comes back and never realises he's running that quick, you know. So that, he's a bit green in a few places and that. It would have been nice to have a race, but nothing was carded before, you know. So we we're hoping he'd do that, but we weren't 100% sure, you know. Understand that Jared might have broken him in as well, so he probably wants to take a little bit of credit for that. Yeah, yeah, he broke in too for his mum was an American ideal. And when I first spoke to him, I, I rang up halfway through and I said, How are you going? He said, Oh, I really like the American ideal. And I said, What? And then about two weeks later, I rang back and said, Oh, no, no, I like the better slight. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, so. what about from here, mate? What, what, what's the plan? Because it's pretty hard to find races for them now. Yeah, so we'll give him a wee spell now. He's been back actually a while because we thought we might have had a race before this, but like I said, nothing came out of it, you know. So. We'll give him a spell now because um, um, some unknown reason the sapling is now, I mean the um, kindergarten is now a month away and then it's a month to the welcome so it'll be too long, he needs a break so we'll give him a break now. Alright but all things uh, are looking pretty positive for, for a really solid two year old season, he's only going to get better. Yeah fingers crossed though. Yeah. Alright it's a very good horse, that is a problem for some trainers and I out of that Cullen Burn will go to the maiden mm. two year old race at Addington in a couple of weeks but yeah it's a challenge for those that big, have won. Big gaps between races mm. isn't it, they paid 70,000 for this one, um, it, it, nice before it's also time wise 153.9 only point one of a second outside follow the styles race record so yeah it'd be interesting how they place them in the next two months yeah very fast the track was with the norwester blowing behind them let's go to the three-year-old trotting feature the hamiltonian third in this race last year donegal bettergrich for the same stable crandell giddy starting to develop uh, a few good trotters around him which hasn't been the norm in his training career but he was very professional, Enheim got it wrong, Habibi into the jury's still out, let's get Mark Mack to bring them home. Chevron Express has gone to the lead, a neck on muscles galore, a needle and Habibi into, and Chevron Express wins again. Chevron Express beat muscles galore, and I think needle just in front of Habibi into. Dexter, she's really come to it in the last three. Yeah, the team at home's worked on her really hard, as I mentioned here before the race, Craig, and um, yeah, she's trotting great. She's got great gait speed and relaxes after that, and. Um, you know, got the lane really good. Were you always confident of picking up in Hine, who obviously got it wrong late in the piece, but was she travelling that well that you don't think it would have mattered? Um, yeah, she was travelling good on, on, her, on his back, and um, when we stepped the wheel, she really did um, sprint quick. So, you know, it was still a long way up the straight left to go. You might have kicked back if he, if he kept trotting, but um, yeah, she did it quite nicely in the end. All right, she's got a bright future ahead of her, both on the racetrack and breeding wise. And of course, I was going to say you should go and buy a new car. Graham Burn be a good time to do that, but um, you don't need one. <laughs> I don't, I uh, agree. And do you reckon we might be getting to the races to watch him one day? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a possibility <laughs> because he, he's not a man who comes out very often, he but he might need before. to. He might need to with this one. Yeah, he might have to come watch her. Hopefully, she's uh, keep going through the um, three odd races, and uh, yeah, hopefully, we can get him off the couch and come watch her one night. Yeah, I caught up with a man they called Bunsen uh, a couple of nights ago. He doesn't come to the races very often. He said it's uh, been a long time since Kate's first won the Auckland Cup. I've spent a wee bit in the interim. Yeah, I actually was at Methven um, last year for the Punters Club um, with that big brown yeah, punter. Rear there. appearance. Rear appearance there, but a uh, nice performance. Where has it been though? Eight starts, hadn't won a race, then it goes to Nelson, picks up its first win there. I think that trip might have made this horse. Uh, gave Muscle Mass the trifecta on it, uh, Greg. They run one, two, three with uh, Muscles Galore second and Needle running third. But, gee, there was uh, disappointments out of the race. Enghein, again, gallop 100 metres out from the, right, uh, from the winning line, a little bit rough in the gate. And I thought Habibi Inter was quite good because she got a long way back, pushed wide on the track and, and really got home nicely. But... Yeah. Michael, there's the big hand we see on in Hine. Where are we with him? I, I no. think it tripped in Hine up. Yeah, he actually, actually galloped at the same place at the trials the week earlier. Look, I actually came back down trotting, so clearly just a little bit of a confidence issue. But we know he's a very good horse, and Habibi, Habibi Inter well, is also a very good horse, but maybe the gap is closed. I still think in Hine might be the best of them. But mm. What um, about Habibi Inter, though? We're... We've got... Uh, We've got a lot of racing coming up with these horses, fellas. Um, a lot can change. The bonus for this horse is she can go to the Oaks. You know, so that's good. All right. It's been a very big weekend for the sire of this horse, American Ideal. And I got this wrong on the day, and I'm happy to say I got it wrong because 40 metres behind with the depth of field in front of this horse, and he hadn't been sighted hey, since. You've got to have an opinion, Gregory, and horses don't have to win off 40 fresh up. You had an opinion, you were wrong. Not first up don't since don't October. Don't do it too hard, brother. No, <laughs> let's hear from Greg Hope after this. Here's Burning to second, seal the deal. But here's Burning and Katara Yale. Karunga Red Fantasy fourth in Clasina Maria. We knew his credentials going into the race on the grass, but that's nothing short of staggering what he's achieved today. Oh, no, we're, we're amazed too. We thought he could run, run top four only because he tries that hard and 
He's such a super wee horse that uh, puts 100% in every time he goes out there and his grass record's been superb really. And like he's not at his best, no way is he at his best, so it's full credit to the horse. Yep. And of course Grant McStay who showed the foresight to give this horse to you guys and, and continue on what he'd already achieved with him which was very good in, its sale, in itself. Oh yeah, no, Grant did an amazing job and he came to us in really good order, I mean he's a beautiful horse. Our job's made a little bit easier because we race a lot of horses at that level so it's easier, you've got to compare apples with apples, it's hard training horses at that top level and only he's the only horse they've got, it's hard you know but I mean I think anybody could train this horse, he's a lovely horse. Alright, I, I guess the, the major target now with that uh, under his belt would be the Easter Cup? Yeah that's definitely, yeah he's a great stayer and it'll suit him and yeah he, he, he'll probably go in the Summer Cup, I think that's a fortnight's time so yeah no, all good. All right. Congratulations to you and Nina. Right, thank you very much. Thanks. Here, a terrific performance, Craig. Uh, he went nearly three and a half seconds quicker than he did the previous mm -hmm. year. Now he's got a Reefton Cup and a couple of Ambling Cups. Yeah, you, you tend to forget this horse because we haven't seen him since October. Um, second a Smolder, into Dominion horse uh, in the Methven Cup back in October. Agree with you, Greg. I, I would have potted him on the day as well. The reason why is horses don't do that. Mm. One workout in that space of time, and it was a soft workout too, uh, starting off 40 metres, he went 317. Outstanding tra uh, training performance, uh, and one of the best I've seen. Yep, three wide into that, Norwest to down the back. Yes, yeah, stunning performance uh, from him. That completes uh, our review. When we come back, uh, we've got plenty more to talk about on your box seat. The standard bread sales aren't too far away. Stay tuned and check out a few key lots from Brick and Farms after the break. In the home straight, in your box seat, uh, as I've been mentioning, we've got great support throughout February, uh, some of which is coming from Brecon Farms. Incredibly important time for them, ladies ahead. I think now we're getting to the exciting part. We've got three or four weeks before the sales. Um, I think the biggest thing today is making sure that we get the horses uh, to the sales without injuries. Uh, yesterday we were fortunate enough to have a tour up in the South Island with uh, the major trainers and, and also included the guys from the North Island and I think they're very pleased on what they saw. We've had a very good season in so far as weather's played its part. Uh, a lot of good conditions for, for horses, lots of rain, lots of grass growth. So. And it's got to help the animal and I don't think we've ever had a better looking draft than what we have going to the sales this year. Yeah, wonderful set up there, haven't they, at Brecon Farms, of course, formerly Yardley Farms. Uh, this draft consists of 23 colts and 11 fillies and uh, it's their biggest draft uh, since the Brecon brand has come to fruition. Of course, uh, relations there to I Can Do's it and Party On, they'll be very much sought after. And, uh, brickandfarms.co.nz you can check out uh, all of the lots that they do have. Now I went through their draft and picked out a few lots for us to focus in on over the next couple of weeks and we start with the horse named after himself, or so he tells us uh, Ken Brecken, legendary lover Lot 13 uh, by Muscle Hill Michael. They've been uh, dying to get this family to the sales, obviously the, the love you, or I can do's it family but this one's out of love you doozy so Craig, it's, um, it's a strong, strong breed. It's one of the modern trotting breeds, and the I can do is that blood's going to be very sought after. Yeah, also half to Snow's big boy, then Stephen Reed, a lot of successful. They, they tend up and get, get up and go early, and of course, uh, the Muscle Hills have been sought after in the past. Six foals to the race for six winners, and uh, hard to suggest that this one won't be winning two on looks alone. We look at lot number 40. Thank you to Peter Early for telling us it's Sanyo spelt backwards. 
Very cunning, very cunning. Yeah, poor old Mark III passed away recently, of course, and Mark III's sold really well, um, not only at the sale the other day in, in uh, Melbourne, last year at the sales, Mark III topped the sale um, with $200,000. So, you know, th there's still money there for them because they do leave nice athletic horses. Yes. All right, out of Paddy Dar Brown. Victorian Derby winner, out of Little General, out of by Mark, Mark III, and of course, Paddy Brown won five then. Yep, did too. Uh, this is the third foal. This is the family of O oh Baby and back to Rackley's and Irmus, so plenty of good bloodlines there. Next one uh, that we actually selected, uh, well, you talk about bloodlines, this one by Better's Delight at a Beach Parade, Brown Colt, lot 104. Um, this is the family, goes all the way back to Franco Ice, uh, and of course, Party Arms Full. So this is the one they bought last year at the Weanling yes, sale. Yes, the full was, yep. Ken was going to the Harness Jewels, stopped in at the Karaka sales, bought the sources of Weanling, next day Party on wins, now a very sought after bloodline. So smart pin hooking from Brick and Farms. Yeah, they're certainly getting into all aspects of the game. The final one we'll look at tonight, uh, better get a lover out of the wonderful race, Philly and Mayor, better cover lover. Yeah, she won nine group races. Um, this one quite a big boy, isn't he? Um, shot thrown certainly to the rock and roll heaven. Lovely type, nice hit about him too. So yeah, I think he'll be well sought after and he'll get a decent price. All right, so there's uh, just a few of their large draft, the 34 that they do have uh, going uh, to the sales, of course, on the 20th. And we'll have a look at two or three more next week um, we did get one sent in uh, this guy here what a good look he is by Better's Delight at a reality check we know his uh, brother of course is Ultimate Machete yeah Ultimate Breeding uh, Graham Walsh doing a super job and reality check was a really good mare I think she had bad feet uh, two years ago you could have probably sold this family and gone yeah maybe Craig mm -hmm. Ultimate Machete is obviously a freakish three year old and he's a lovely big strong looking horse so um, good on them. These guys are moving ahead as a, as a breeding organisation, he will sell well. Yeah, it goes back to a, a really good old family doesn't it, the Maureen's Dream, Tuapika Star, Marza Star type of family so yeah of course with Ultimate Machete flying uh, this bloke he'll make big money. Alright, exciting time for the vendors, good luck to them over the next couple of weeks. Um, well, those horses going to the sale will be hoping win. These people went to the races and got win number one. Here's Heather Gerrard winning back on the 6th of January with a Hoka Jimmy. Uh, so a big moment uh, for Heather there. So a great effort uh, by a Hoka Jimmy, subsequently raced uh, on Monday, was... Uh, Pretty uh, tough run for it. And uh, here's Alicia Harrison winning with uh, No Way Out. Yeah, for Anna Donnelly. This is in a junior driver's race. Uh, she's driven a few for Warren Taylor, a couple of trotters, uh, not many drives, but put this one in the 1-1, one, one, gave it a perfect uh, perfect run. And nice first up win on the grass uh, at Taronga yeah, on the weekend. And good on her too. She's got a university education. So she's saying to herself, I love my horses, but I'm giving myself a chance to, to have a career outside racing as well. And, of course, uh, Warren Taylor's her grandfather. So well done to you, Alicia. All right, uh, there's a couple of early winners in their careers. What about what's coming up racing-wise for you? Matter with two, $25,000 pick six there, an eight race card at 541 uh, Addington Raceway, a race alongside Alexandra Park, so the two big senior venues, if you like, 11 really races good, each. Really good to see lots of two-year-old racing, Alexandra Park. Mm. Three two-year-old races, that's a rarity. Yeah, two-year-old trotters appear at Addington too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on Auckland, Young Guns heats. Uh, also, the, there's nine in each of those two-year-old fillies heats, so it's a great day at Auckland on Friday night. 11 races, 140-odd runners. Waikowiti, 11 races starting 12.05. They've got 222 noms, of course, they race Tuesday as well. And just a note through from Bruce Negus, uh, two-day meeting, of course, no invited drivers uh, series this year, but $1,000 driver's prize, Greg Brody putting that up, as well as $1,000 trainer's prize. And also Lincoln Farms are donating a service fee to Sir Lincoln. All right, the Chariots is on. It's a deep field, but I was disappointed by the support card there, Michael. Yeah, not as strong as it can be. Um, I think a lot of the horses are a bit tired after Melbourne, so some of the bigger guns are getting ready for the week after. So um, next three Saturdays, Menangle very big. The huge one, Miracle Mile, not on the 25th, where there's going to be a whole bunch of Group 1 horses out of New Zealand. We are pr probably the favourite for five Group 1s that day, but as we saw the other day, it doesn't always go your way. Michael, we've been usurped once again by the big man when it comes to tipping. Not only did he tip the winner last week, he tipped the Quinella as well. So I don't even know why we do selections for this programme. No, just utter arrogance from the big mm. man. I actually tipped the winner, but <laughs> I thought it would pay like $3 because it was against Dream About Me. They scratched Dream About Me. Let's have another go. What do you got this week for us, boys? Um, Craig, heavyweight hero. That might have been you back in the day. These days, you're more of a lightweight hero. 
Um, Ten metre <laughs> handicap over 2200. Yeah, he's, I just think he's a he's, he's the hero. Fire. He's on fire tonight, he? Michael, isn't he? <laughs> Might be time for him another holiday. Um, yeah, I thought he's very good last start. He's come back, of course, placing the jewels behind Custodian as a three-year-old. Have a look at him, Michael. He's a different horse than he was last yeah. season. Gee, he's just growing. And he, he, I think 10 metres won't stop him on Friday. I'll go circle, second line barrier, draw two in the second line, not bad. And Gregor I, let it ride at Addington for you. Yeah, eight length trial winner at its most recent appearance. All right, that's been your box seat. Uh, see you Friday night. Yeah, enjoy the show, fellas. Got through a lot tonight and uh, your Friday night. And then, of course, uh, next Wednesday, we'll cover it all again. All right, and you'll wrap up the chariots for yeah, us next too. Next stop, Sydney, we'll talk about that next week on the box seat as we also count down to the sales. All right, you said that very quickly, didn't you? That's been your show. 60 Minutes of Joy, hopefully for you. We'll see you in seven days' time.